Welcome to Strange Weekly News. In this show, we take a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe to fringe science and fringe phenomena each news item we go over in the show i will place all the links of them in the description box below once this live show is over as well as chapters on the timeline index hello and welcome to all of my first time viewers and listeners and everyone watching this live and guess what today we are also streaming on rumble so we're doing youtube twitch and rumble all live right here on this channel before we get started, please show your support for my work by just hitting that like button for this video. It is so easy to do. It just takes you a second and makes a really big difference. Also, make sure to subscribe and make sure that you are still subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell right down below as we do three live shows right here on this channel every single week, covering topics from UFOs, the paranormal, and things that are unexplained. Also on this channel, I post YouTube shorts, keeping you up to date on the latest strange news. I am very excited for this episode of Weekly Strange News. On episode 83, we've done 83 so far, and I still messed up on the intro. Not a good start, but... With this one, we are kind of doing a wrap-up of the year. The strangest news that's ever been covered on this channel in the year 2023. And then going over it. I When I was going through my notes, I'm like, this one, this one, this one. And my document is 25 pages long. Of course, we're not going <laughs> to spend hours on this, but a good amount of time. And so I placed them in categories. And the first category we're going to get into is hauntings. We will not be covering UFO cases today as we did a whole 2023 uh, wrap up of the UFO phenomenon, and UFO disclosure. And we also covered it a little bit yesterday as well for what the future holds in 2024. So this particular show will not be covering any UFO articles, but a bunch of other very wacky, strange, weird and even mysterious things so the first thing we're going to get into the first category is hauntings if you've been following strange news you know how it goes it goes ufos the paranormal science and then just strange we're mixing it up just a little bit starting off with hauntings so i'm going to share my screen here because let me tell you something covering haunted paintings had been and has been the highlight for me when it comes to strange news because they're just some of the most bizarre cases that you'll ever come across so this first one is a spooky painting of a little girl that is feared to have been quote cursed and has been returned twice to the charity shop aka thrift store after two different customers were freaked out by its creepy aura and we are seeing the actual image right here let me zoom in on it because it says and these people are geniuses those at the charity shop said she's back sold twice and returned twice are you brave enough so for everyone who loves a dare or is a heavy gambler this you, you can't you can't you can't say no to this and it's only what 20 pounds that's probably not that bad it's a freaky painting but let's get into it on to why people bought it and returned it so the painting shows a little girl in a red dress dress with an unnerving facial expression i don't think it's that unnerving but it is a little odd in my opinion and what's weird about this painting is that the eyes as the staff people say the eyes follow you and when you're able to create a painting where no matter you go the eyes can keep keep an, keep an eye on you first of all that is that is a um, an artistic skill that i don't know how that's ever achieved but if it's haunted oh it just makes it that much more creepy right so the odd portrait was donated to Hastings Advice Representation Center known as the Hark Shop, but it was returned twice after terrified buyers bought it, brought it back, citing that the painting just had this spooky aura about it, the spooky vibes, and it's not even October anymore. So can we even say that? The answer is yes always. So the manager of Hark, Steve, confirmed that the painting's eyes does follow him around the room in a very uncanny way. And so when these buyers were looking at this, they're like, oh, this is like a pretty good price. And they just put it in my bathroom, put it in the kitchen, put it in the living room. And then once they began to feel these eyes, not only following you around, but like you feel that you're being stared at, 
they return that so quick. Now, usually at a thrift store, you buy it and you can't return it. That's just that's just how it goes. I don't know how it works here for Hark. Okay, don't ask me on, on the return policy, but you usually can't return that kind of stuff. And so what's even weirder with this particular one is that it this curse that was placed onto this painting, as the story goes, these these buyers were having different types of bad luck, feeling evil in their house, which your home is, it's, it's your safe space. It's your temple. It's the area where you can go after a long, brutal day, get some ice cream from the freezer and watch a little bit of television and feel relaxed. You never, you should never feel in your home as if you are surrounded by malevolent entities right? Never. Your your home is your safe place. It's your little cottage. And so obviously these people return that painting so darn quick. They're like, uh, are we doing this? And so there was a lot of weird things happening, but this brings up to another painting that we also covered this year. Maybe one of my favorites actually. And it's this one right here. And a faster version of this story, because this is uh, created by an artist in Ukraine by the name of Svetlana Telitz. And she painted a picture, this one that we're seeing right here, depicting a pale, sad woman in a strange black headdress standing in the rain. What's crazy about this painting is not only was it returned multiple times, but even the artist had an eerie time painting it. She had mentioned that she felt as if her hand was being guided to create this. And then all the people that bought it and then ended up returning it, they're like, we ain't we not having this in our home. They also had a feeling of evil, a feeling of it looking at them and a curse attached to it to where bad things would happen. This painting in particular is called The Rain Woman. And it's one that Honestly, you'd probably find at hot not Hobby Lobby, but like Home Goods or um, Tuesday morning here in the States. I don't know if you have it across the pond, but I just feel with the color scheme, it's just one of those paintings that you would just find at one of those basic furniture stores where they print these paintings in bulk. That's the vibe I get. Would I ever buy this? Heck no. That's a big fat no for me, especially with the story attached to it. But if you are a paranormal investigator or those that like to collect haunted items, okay, then this this is the treasure for you. This is awesome. We've also covered other cases this year of people that have had haunted museums that have collected antiques that are believed to be haunted actually throughout the year, specifically having to do with haunted dolls. It's always the dolls. And the question is why? They're meant for children, but then they're all freaky and then adults collect them. And it's like... The irony is real here. I mean, the dolls are meant to bring you happiness and imagination and friendship, right? But it's bringing you evil little entities into your home. Mast is niceness. Oof, pretty spooky stuff. At least, I think so. And Gizmo, thank you so much for that. I really, really appreciate it. And for those, I think this is going to be our last show for the year, isn't it? <gasps> it is. Okay, Happy New Year to everyone watching this still in 2023. If you are watching this in 2024, you're kind of a time traveler. You know, if, if I were to be honest here, you're a time traveler. And that is very, very cool. Don't tell your secrets to anyone. But Happy New Year for all of my fun people out there. Hello. Hopefully you are driving safe. Okay. Number one, a lot of accidents happen during new year. So drive safe or stay home. And honestly, nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with staying home and watching your favorite movies. Okay. So in the next aspect we're going to get into that I thought deserved a mention today in our strangest news of the year. And that's Dracula. Dracula comes up twice for this little aspect, this little segment of Dracula, because the first one is based off of the information collected from these letters. They believe, referring to the researchers and scientists and those looking at the DNA, say that, you know what, Vlad the Impaler, Dracula, it's the only way to say it, by the way, otherwise you go to prison, so you make sure to say it right, is that he was actually vegan or vegetarian. And this is wacky, right? Well, number one is every Dracula, Dracula movie. Okay, I don't want to go to jail yet. 
he's drinking blood. Okay. Drinking blood. You're not, you're not vegan. You're not vegetarian. You're, you're drinking an animal product, human product, which they're still animals. So animal product, right? No, that's not cool. So this is a game changer in the sense of trying to understand Dracula or even count. What's his name from Sesame street? Is it count Drac? I'm pretty sure. Right. Even him. Okay. Shocking stuff. And I was like, Whoa, this is wild. And so this was based, uh, this was the findings were written in the journal analytical chemistry and it extracted thousands of fragments of protein molecules from the surface of these letters and isolated about 500 of those that showed signs of degradation indicating that they were over 500 years old. Okay. And then that that's, that's a given. But researchers isolated a further 100 of the most degraded proteins, which were likely the oldest. And about 16 of these protein molecules were said to be of human origin and most likely come from Vlad III. So they don't actually know as it had been through so many hands, maybe even Vlad's assistants, maybe Vlad's assistants were a vegan vegetarian while Vlad was just chowing down, right? We don't know. It's an assumption. But I said, oh, my goodness. Let's say he was. Let's say Vlad. Vlad the Impaler, one of the most terrified, terrifying or terrified people um, in Europe during the time of his reign in Romania. Um, it, it's kind of interesting if you ask me, not terrified isn't the right word, but people were terrified of him. But then if you ask you from Romania, they'll say, no, he was the hero of that area um, during his, during his reign. And let me tell you this, I've gotten that comment so many times because I've made shorts and I've made videos about this. And the thing is that at the end of the day, history is written by the victors, by the romanticists. So of course, people that live in the same area as Vlad once did, of course, they're going to sing his praises. Hey, that's what we do with all of our heroes, quote, heroes, right? But every other country is going to demonize them, that hero that you believe to be one, right? Because it all has to do with language, the narrative, and, of course, who's writing it. Those from that country or those looking, looking in from the outside, right? Okay, I just want to want to emphasize that but another really cool thing about dracula is with this with these same letters that were studied okay it's believed at the very least that maybe dracula also cried blood so whenever he was a little sad a little sniffly bam 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 blood's coming down that could not be more badass okay than being the scariest man ever as the story goes, at least, right? And then just crying tears of blood. Oof. Oof. That's that's some pretty spooky stuff. But also, okay, uh, if, if I were to encounter that, I'd be, I would say, oh my goodness. Um, number one, are you okay? Number two, why are you crying? Number three, why are your tears red? So many questions. And during this time frame, during the 1400s, medicine wasn't that fantastic. So it's like, you can make all of your own assumptions. And when medicine couldn't answer those questions that you had, it was automatically demons and angels. That was your next little bit of thought. So just imagine all the doctors that saw him cry and said, whoa, Mr. Demon, or whoa, you are actually our savior of Romania. You pick one or the other. Well, thank you so much. Cheers from Sweden for the RV fund. Thank you for that. That is so nice. We are speeding through these only because I have 25 pages of notes and I want to get through all of these, all of my favorites. But let me know in the comments, let me know in the live chat if you've been following Strange News for any period of time, if I'm going to be covering your favorite articles. Like, let's say I, I'm covering one, you're like, oh my God, that was my favorite. Hit the like button and say, Blah, blah, blah is my favorite article. The one about Dracula, the one about Dracula being a vegan or crying tears of blood. Okay. I want to know. I want to see if we're on the same wavelength and we're covering the same favorite articles of the year. Okay. Because that would be fantastic, don't you think? Oh, uh, John, yes. Also witchcraft. You got angels, demons, and witchcraft for your answers when medicine or science cannot fill in the gaps. Yes. Yes. Spooky stuff. Really is. <laughs> So there is that aspect of Dracula, and I will put all the links 
in the description box below. It's going to be so many links, but there you'll be able to go into a lot more detail on these articles because there's a lot to them. I'm going to take my screen off, go into the next one, because now we're getting to the aspect of science. And we've covered some really just amazing, fantastic articles this year. And we're not actually, funny enough, we won't be covering any about AI, which we do every single week. We won't be covering any today. I don't think so at the very least. But this one, starting off with the Terminator, because this... What was found, and I, let me try to find the journal. Okay, it was written in the journal Nature in July that these scientists created a metal that is capable of performing the healing trick, okay, which is just like in Terminator, okay, with T-1000. It's, it's spooky, spooky stuff as we're seeing in this image right here. And so in the study... Scientists investigated how nano-sized metal pieces responded to repeated stress using a device called a transmission electron microscope. And the device, the device appeared, uh, excuse me, applied an extremely small force equivalent to the stomping of a mosquito's leg in a form of 200 tiny tugs to the metal every second. In two of the metals, copper and platinum, cracks appeared and grew throughout the material. But then, just after 40 minutes, the metals fused themselves back together, leaving no trace of any cracks. Could you imagine? Okay, 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 okay. I'm bringing up AI. I'm bringing up robots in this. Because let's say, just like in Terminator... They get a little too out of hand. You start shooting at it because you, at least in America, you shoot first and ask questions later. And then you ask how many Walmarts is it, the size, okay, or football fields. But aside from that, you're shooting at this robot because it went a little rogue and it doesn't die. It, it, it doesn't, it keeps on going and then it fixes itself. Just like in Terminator, what would you do? I would at the very least need two pairs of pants that's some really wacky stuff, but it can also be used for amazing things having to do with our buildings, literally building anything with this kind of metal that will be able to heal itself. Great place for in locations like Japan or dealing with earthquakes, right? There are pros and cons, and it all depends on how that technology will be used for the benefit of humanity or for the aspect of greed and not caring about the extinction of our species. But this right here had to be spoken about for today's show because this one blew my mind then and it blows my mind now. It hasn't changed. It's still insane. Right, Debbie? Imagine a house that repairs itself. It's almost like the movie Monster House. And that's one of my like childhood favorite movies where it was this ghost woman that practically possessed the house. Okay, she was able to fix some stuff up. It was insane. Yeah, could you imagine that would be amazing? I would, 10 out of 10, would recommend that if it doesn't go into robots and AI. At least I think so. David says, Christina's a metal repair shop. Imagine, you wouldn't even need one of those. You would just buy this material and then it would repair itself. <sighs> Fender benders. Yes, hides. Yes, that'd be so good. Imagine a car that would just repair itself. Mm. 10 out of 10. So our next one we're going to be covering is this one. And it's a robot that sweats, shivers, and breathes like a human. Could I just, I can't with this one, but we're going to cover it because this one, and actually I can pull up the date on when it was addressed and I should be saying that throughout, but this one was June 8th of 2023 and it's the world's first mannequin that generates heat shivers, walks, and breathes like a human could help scientists understand our body's resilience to punishing heat waves. So scientists at Arizona State University, ASU, redesigned a robot used by 
clothing companies for sports gear to mimic the thermal functions of the human body. And this test android by the name of Andy was fitted with synthetic pores for artificial sweating, temperature, and heat flux sensors across the 35 different space surface areas covering its mannequin body. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like Blade Runner, where we have replicants, and we will not be able to tell the difference between a person and a replicant, especially if they're able to breathe, walk, sweat, shiver, create heat. It's game over, especially, and we also covered this this year as well, synthetic skin that can heal itself. You know how you're able to get a little cut, it creates a scab, and then within a week, your, your, your small little cut, your paper cut, it's gone. It healed. It did amazing. Your body's incredible. They have created synthetic skin to, to do things very similarly. They've also created skin that stretches really nice, like on your finger, and then goes back. It's very elastic, which has been for a while, but it's become more significant. That can also sweat as well. Not like this one, because this robot's made out of plastic, but they have created skin that can sweat and that can heal itself. I'm telling you, if this continues, it is game over. But for the time being in 2023, it's absolutely fascinating to see the progression of how scientists are creating robots, how they're going to integrate them with AI, with ML, machine learning. Watching it in the making is super cool. But when it starts entering our society and almost providing themselves as human, ooh, mm -mm. No, that's where I cross the line and I say, no, baby, not today, not any day, never, ever. And of course, that article also goes into significant detail on their findings. But we, we got the gist of the story, okay? Sweating robots. Oscar, yes, also RoboCop. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Hmm. Pretty freaky stuff. Paul says, why does it need to sweat? So the purpose for these mannequins to sweat is actually to understand how the human body can withstand heat waves. So instead of using actual people for these tests, as they did in the 70s, when psychological and physical tests weren't as ethical as today, when they could just test it on people and hope for the best, now they're able to test it on robots. And so there isn't a risk to life, if that makes sense. But if you're just casually saying, hey, I made a robot that can sweat, yeah, you better ask why and say, why on earth would you make something like that? Now, for science, okay, mm, I can barely buy it. But just for fun, put that thing back where it came from more so help me. Guess what movie that's from. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Who can guess that movie? I'll give you a hint. A, a hint. A hint. It's a. It's about monsters. Okay, it's great. It's a great one. <laughs> okay, this one is also crazy, and it's soft e skin that communicates with the brain. So, as I had mentioned just like a few moments ago, we're gonna go into more detail on this particular one because the e skin is soft and stretchable while also being able to mimic the sense of touch and run effectively at a low voltage. So we mentioned stretchy skin, sweaty skin, skin that can skin that can heal itself, but this one also mimics the sense of touch. Put all those bad boys together and you got a replicant. No question there. Got it right. It is Monsters, Inc. Y'all are on top of it. Yes, that is the movie from that quote. <laughs> so researchers at Stanford University have developed digital skin that can convert sensations such as heat and pressure to electrical signals that could be read by electrodes implanted in the human brain. And this article was published May 19th of 2023, according to Tech Explore. So although such capabilities were developed years earlier, the components required at that time to convert digital signals were rigid and just really not that conventional. Now, in 2023, this new e-skin is as soft as 
skin. And the conversion elements are seemingly incorporated within the skin, which measures a few tens of nanometers thick, which you can't even see that with the naked eye. All right. That is super duper crazy thin. And it's amazing how far our technology has come to where we can create such things like that, that are just a nano thick, tens of thousands of nanometers thick. It's unbelievable. It really, really is when you think about it. But the majority of people don't think about it. That's why we have this show to take a moment, all right? To take this one moment together and say, whoa, that's actually insane because it is. So the development holds promise for more natural interaction between AI-based prosthetic limbs and the brain. It is also a step forward in efforts to construct robots mm, that can feel human sensations such as pain, pressure, and temperature, which this, 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 this coin has two faces. It could be super beneficial to place robots, drones, probes into space, have them understand the environment, the atmosphere, and then provide that data to people and say, okay, it's safe, right? That's amazing. Yes. hundred percent for it. Just like data and Star Trek. Great stuff. But it could also be used in a super evil way. It just depends on who has hold of this technology. We can see almost everything in a positive light. And I'm saying almost because not everything is amazing. And you can't, it's hard to see. But in many cases, with the right perspective, you're like, okay, okay, you know what? It's not so bad if everything, if everything stays positive. This next one Oop, is black holes. Of course, we got to talk about black holes. And this particular image, I mentioned this. Whenever this article came out, and I'll tell you when this article came out, it came out March 28th. I remember my comment because to me, it looked like an octopus eye, like a zoom in. Someone zoomed in and got the octopus eye and then the octopus skin. People are going to say, well, an octopus eyeball has a rectangular pupil. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mr. Kill Dandy. All right. Aside from that rectangular pupil, it looks like an octopus eye. Don't you think so? The right answer is yes. <clears throat> and if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, that YouTube link is in the description box below for you to see all the visuals as well. So let's go into this detail here because astronomers have discovered one of the largest black holes ever found an ultra massive monster, roughly 30 billion times the mass of the sun using a space time trick predicted by Albert Einstein. This is why I'm covering this. It's not just, Oh, cool. A black hole. It is the ultra massive black hole. Oh, <gasps> super cool. So this colossal black hole, which lurks about 2.7 billion light years from earth is the bright in the brightest galaxy of the galaxy cluster Abel 1201 was given away by a giant arc of warped light from a background galaxy that had been stretched and smudged by the black hole's immense gravitational field. Oh, black holes are so cool, and we know very little about them. The first one was only found a decade, well, the first image we got last year. The very first image of a black hole we got last year, or what's the beginning of this year? I think it was last year, but we haven't known about black holes, like the actual evidence of black holes for about like a decade or two. It's insane, but they've always been theorized. The math has always shown it. Albert Einstein's a great example, but just, they're just so wacky. They're so cool. And I'm looking forward to see what astronomers are going to find more when they do their research on black holes. That's really it about this article, just finding the biggest one ever thus far. And it looks like an octopus eye. This one's really cool too. This one, th what we're looking at here is an insect brain that contains 3,016 neurons. And this article was published also in March of 2023. And Cassidy, thank you for that. Always, always thank you so much. So with this one, 
scientists have unveiled the first complete map of an insect's brain. This is the, the what we're seeing right here is the very first complete map of an insect's brain. And this took 12 years to create. Do you have that kind of dedication? Do you have that kind of discipline? No, I don't. Me, personally, no. Uh, unless I, I knew the real purpose. I mean, first of all, this is this is insane. This is, this is amazing. I love this so freaking much. So here, this, what we're looking at, demonstrates all 3,016 neurons in the brain of a larval fruit fly. And between those brain cells are 548,000 points of connection or synapses where cells can send each other chemical messages that in turn trigger electrical signals that travel through the cell's wiring. This took 12 years. 12. <gasps> you know what? Work well worth it. Okay, it's, and you might think, oh, AI could have created this. Oh, this is so lame. It also looks like balloons from the movie Up. Yes, it does. But I'm going to assume here, I am no scientist by any means, but I'm going to assume here all these colors have a very specific function. There's a reason to these colors. But yeah, it, it, can, cook, it can look kind of lame until you understand what it is and how much time it took so sick. I'm hearing a lot of candy. Looks like candy. Okay. All right. No problem. I, I can see that. Can't go. Who doesn't love candy? Crazy people. And those that don't have taste buds. Because candy is amazing. Sugar, it's a drug. It, it literally is. And um, I can't get enough of it. Mm, delicious. Jessica says, I hope they spend that much time mapping the human brain. Valid. 12 years, hopefully longer, or I would like that to be the case. But this one, I have a larval fruit fly. Another little fun fact, and I won't be covering this article, but I'll make it really short. There was an article written earlier this year about how fruit flies and other types of flies, when they see their comrades dead, for instance, on a windowsill, they will also die due to depression. So, well, they think it's depression. So next time you have a bunch of like flies coming in your house, just leave all the corpses. All right. When they see them, the little bugs, they see it and they say, oh, no, that's my homie. And they'll go as well. It's very morbid, <laughs> super duper morbid, but it's a fact. We know that now due to amazing scientific research. It's not for all bugs, but it is for flies. Now, you know, do with that information what you will. Now we're getting into the creepy. Now we're getting into just like the creepy articles of the year. And some funny food articles um, as well. Because, uh, who, okay, if you don't love food, weird things. So I'm going to share my screen here. This one was originally a joke. Not by me, but by the creator of this. And... It, it didn't go well. <laughs> Let me explain. Because Channel 4, which is a UK channel, had been brand had been branded as a beyond the pale after appearing to show Greg Wallace and Michael Rowe Jr. eating human flesh. That's how this TV show was going, called Good Harvest, where they were showing how to make human meat, not how to make, but how to create, purchase, whatever human meat and eating it and how ethical it is and how amazing it is. That whole TV show was a joke. It was, it was satire. The majority of people didn't know that when they watched the, the, the show and they were flipping out. They were saying, holy crap, Greg Wallace and Michael Rowe, they are cannibals. How is this even possible? Why is this airing on television? So Channel 4 is getting all of these phone calls of all these enraged Brits saying, how could you do this? This is awful. Don't show this to children, whatever, right? And the TV show says, 
you didn't watch it through, did you? And they're like, how could I watch it through? It was disgusting. Channel 4 says, yeah, um, I, I kind of recommend that you watch it through because it's satire. It's a joke. And oof, they got intense backlash, which I'm a little bit shocked because British humor can be very dark. And so this can be up some people's alley. But for the majority of people that was wa- that were watching this on Channel 4 called The Good Harvest, they didn't know what was going on. And this was published July 24th. And so, oh, by the way, um, Greg Wallace, he is a MasterChef host. For those that didn't know, I didn't know that. But now you do. So don't, don't be ignorant like myself. And so with this, how how the the episode went was that Wallace, who is 58, he visited Good Harvest's HQ, which again is not a real place, where staff explained how pieces of flesh were harvested from humans and grown into edible meat, which in a way, it can be believable. Why? Because it, it's happening right now with cows, with pigs. Um, Recently, in the last few years, they're a, they've been able to create things like this, and they say that it should be on the shelves by the year 2025, 2027, where you'll be able to eat lab-grown meat and buy it at the grocery store for mass consumption. And so I I, I can get where people are saying, I, I can believe this. This seems very real, but it wasn't. And so the TV star was seen eating uh, or was seen visiting donors, including a 67-year-old retired receptionist who agreed to have flesh taken from his butt and thigh in order to fund two weeks energy bill. That's it. That, I mean, that, that's awful. Okay. Um, there isn't really that. There's nothing funny about that to be able to have to sacrifice that in order to have money to pay the bills. So that joke didn't land. I don't think it landed for a lot of people. This article also goes into immense detail on what the TV show covered and and how it flopped so badly. But for the most part, I gave you the gist of it. Yeah, peace of mind says, what? Fund an energy bill? Yeah, yeah, it's not for everyone. People are like, ew, WTF, crazy. Some are laughing. And hey, you know what? It it depends on your sense of humor. (laughs) This next one, since we're kind of on the topic of food, we're going to cover some craziest food things that hit the market this year. One of them being mustard Skittles. I can't stand mustard. I cannot. I, I do not like mustard. I no. Well, imagine mustard-flavored Skittles, and it was launched August 5th for the National Mustard Day. And so French and Skittles, they partnered together and created this bad boy. You couldn't really find it in stores because I tried looking for it when this happened. Um, There were only a very few locations. Well, it wasn't that... You could actually buy it, but it's more of a promotional. And it would only be available in at like mobile locations in very certain cities. So you couldn't just buy it at the store because that would be a flop. They would have lost so much money. But there were some other really crazy things that hit the food market. One of them being Cola Chup, which is Pepsi-flavored ketchup. And it was for the ball games during the summertime. I... I I don't know how I I don't know how I feel about this. I I'm not really fond of soda to begin with. Ketchup is great. Leave ketchup alone. It already has sugar. You don't have to add more. When you read in the back, okay, of of the, the the nutrient section of ketchup, you will be shocked by the amount of sugar that's in it. But it tastes so good. French fries, chicken chicken tendies, chicken nuggets, mm, fish sticks. It's so good. But leave ketchup alone. It's perfect just the way it is. But then we also covered pasta scented candles. Now, it's only for the price of $80. 
if you really love the scent of pasta water, make pasta at home. Do not, I beg you, do not spend $80 on a candle, number one, but a candle of a scent that you can cook any time of the day. Don't do it. And then, of course, during the summer was ranch flavored ice cream. And this one was actually, you were able to purchase it during like two months at Walmart, which I didn't buy because I don't like ranch. I just don't care for it. Not that I don't don't like it. It tastes good with carrots and celery, but I don't like ranch enough to eat it as ice cream. It went viral on TikTok. People were, were, were raving about it that it tastes just like cold ranch, a little bit of sugar. But their reviews were enough for me to say, it's okay, they've done it. I do not need to do such a thing. And I, and I, and I swear to you, I went to Walmart. I saw it with my own eyeballs. It was available for purchase for like five bucks, which isn't five or not, not that bad. And I thought to myself, should I, shouldn't I? And I leaned toward the side of no. I don't, I don't need that in my life, but let me ask you this. If you were living in the States, did you purchase this ranch flavored ice cream? And if you did, what'd you like about it? Or did you not like it? Hmm. Oh, Peter says that sounds about as appetizing as sitting down with a huge spoon and a jar of mayo. I was going to say mayonnaise, but you did the abbreviation of mayo. Yeah, ranch is a salty version of mayonnaise. It is. And both. I'll pass. I'll pass on both of them. JJL, thank you so much for that. Thank you for supporting the channel. So, um, you guys are so funny. I'm, I'm trying to like catch up with the comments because y'all are funny. I'm just kind of highlighting them so everyone else can read them. Cassidy says, ranch, carrots, and broccoli, yum. It, that is pretty good. Paul says, no, did not buy it. Yeah, it's not ideal for the majority of people. Especially with that hint of sugar flavor. No. No. Hard pass. Let me see if I have another. Oh, I do have some more foodie ones. This one was a really big deal, actually. And this was the mammoth meatball. This made international news, and this took place in March. And so food scientists in March unveiled a giant meatball made from the lab-grown flesh of an extinct woolly mammoth, saying the protein from the past showed the way for future foods. They had a good marketing team for this because you could not casually convince someone to think this is a really great idea yeah let's totally make mammoth meat do you see this facial expression it's seriously are, are you joking their marketing team was 10 out of 10 for this one and so this uh, this image that we're seeing here the meatball was displayed under a glass bell jar by Australian-based cultivated meat firm Val at the Nemo Science Museum in the Dutch capital, Amsterdam. And so people were like, ooh, ah, wow, for this mammoth meatball, which, by the way, no one could actually eat. So they grew it in a lab based off of extinct mammoth meat, and they really just wanted to display how cool they were and saying, look what I made and you can't make this, but you also can't eat it. But there, there were some very valid reasons actually to why you can't eat this. It has to do with health risks. But then I'm thinking to myself, if there's health risks, why even bother demonstrating it to the world? And then you also have the company Colossal that wants to bring mammoths back from the dead and dodo birds. If you have these two companies partnering up, Val and Colossal, you got you got a storm coming for you. When I'm saying you, I'm saying the mammoths. Mm -hmm. They're going to come back to life just to be eaten. Now, Colossal is saying mammoths, bringing them back from extinction will help with climate change. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea the connection between the two. But... That's what they say. Same with dodo birds. 
Why do we, why, why do we need them? Bless their heart. Okay. They, I'm sorry that they are extinct. Bless them. But they're probably extinct for a reason. Maybe you should leave them there. But it demonstrates how cool science is, how amazing humans are, that we can bring things back from the dead. Heck yeah, that's one for humanity. Or is it? This article also goes into significant detail because to fill in some of the gaps of the sequence of the mammoth um, myoglobin by using genes from the African elephant, the mammoth's closest living relative, it was then inserted into a sheep cell using an electrical charge. And that's how this mammoth, mammoth meatball was created. So we needed a little bit of help from the mammoth, the zebra elephant, and sheep cells as well. You got to bring in everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just found it really weird. Okay. Now we're getting into the funny stuff. The funniest articles of the year, ones that I actually laughed very hard. And actually a few of these are rather recent. So if you've been following strange news for the last two months, you're going to recognize some of these starting off with one of my favorites. Let's pull this one up. And that is the smart toilet that burst into flames. Let's read this one. Because a Chinese man barely managed to get off of his smart toilet with his butt intact after smoke started coming out of the toilet and the whole thing burst into flames. There was a short, short circuit in the toilet and it, it turned into this. People's jokes are top notch, but if you're going to tell a Taco Bell joke, up your game, okay? Up it. That, that's an old one. Bring bring it up a few notches. Mexican food, bring it up a little higher, but not that high. Give me some originals, all right? I want to hear them. I want to laugh at your jokes. I want to give you five stars out of five stars. Talk about Mexican food. That's like not even a one star. It, it's a half a star, all right? That's a challenge for you. That is my challenge to you. Make a good joke about this flaming toilet. So, this took place in China. It's not the first case that has happened because another flaming toilet took place in November as well. And this one took place in December, early December. But what's crazy is that these flaming toilets, these, these smart toilets have happened in other parts of the world as well. I had to ask myself, what the heck is a smart toilet? It's meant to take your waste and put it somewhere else right? That's all you need. But no, these ones can, they, they heat up. The, the toilet seat heats up. It has a bidet. It, it has cool lights to it. It's remote controlled. I mean, all of this fancy stuff. Some of them have massaging features. Some of them have self-cleaning. Some of them are voice command, which I think is kind of weird. And so that's what a smart toilet is. It was news to me when I first came across it. And I said, why? Why can't some things just be left super simple? Toilets should be one of them. In my world, at least. And luckily, no one lives in my world but me. So I don't think I'll ever be getting a smart toilet. And if it was given to me, I would check all the circuits. Because this, this is terrible. Poor guy just barely made it out alive. He's not injured. He's totally fine. But if we just zoom in right here. He jumped off without his pants and without his shoes. Yeah. Could you imagine? Your, your, it's your time of relaxation. It is called the restroom for a reason. Also known as like the wash closet, the bathroom, and as the toilet, a bunch of different names. But I like to use the word restroom. One, it just sounds a lot nicer. Okay? That's like my number one. But number two, yes. You are resting. You are running away from the family for five minutes. You're going on your work break because you're getting paid by the hour. Might as well take a dump on company time, right? That's why it's called a restroom. And that's why in today's world, people take their cell phones with them to the restroom. One for of several reasons, but that's one of them. She meant to relax and run away for a little bit. Am I wrong? Am I wrong to say that? No, I don't think so. (laughs) 
America bringing in a good joke. I like it. <laughs> Spire, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. I'm not wrong. I, I appreciate that confirmation right there. <laughs> Proof to sue. Yes, bit. Yes, definitely. Unless it was in the paperwork. You got to read the fine print, you know, which nobody does. Who, who even reads the manual these days? Hardly anybody. <laughs> I don't think this person did either. So there's that little tidbit of the smart toilet that burst into flames. But this one happened during Halloween. And this story is, is so funny, I swear. So, oh no, what did I do? Here it is. So police in the Mexican state of Cahuilla recently arrested a knife-wheeling Chucky doll and its ventriloquist owner for terrorizing people in the streets for money. So Chucky, the red-headed murderous doll possessed by the spirit of a serial killer, is one of the most terrifying movie characters in history. I've never seen it, so I don't know. And my opinion doesn't matter because I've never seen it. But he is an iconic character whose chilling smile has terrorized generations around the world. And so it really doesn't come to a total surprise that someone used a Chucky doll to scare people into giving them money. And <laughs> this is where it gets so good. Because the ventriloquist who only identified himself as Carlos N., and started manipulating a large Chucky doll, doll like a ventriloquist and terrorize people on the streets and say, hey, give me your money. But instead of with a gun or with some kind of threats, he threatened them with the haunted doll. That's pretty spooky for your average Joe, okay? So when police were alerted about a Chucky doll assaulting people, officers were dispatched to the scene where they encountered a man carrying a red-headed doll, which happened to be also carrying a real knife. And if you look at this image right here, Chucky's in handcuffs. This doll right here, the Mexican police, they do not play. And they put the doll in handcuffs. They were not going to take any risks. And they didn't. Not a single one. Turns out this ventriloquist was intoxicated. And, and that's a big reason to why he did this. At least so they say. But I think this is, this is hilarious. This one made me laugh so hard. Now, not, not for the people who actually had to go through the terror. But for everyone reading or listening to this, this is funny, especially during October. Oh, yeah, this is great. This is great stuff. And as they say, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. And this is a great example of that. P says, be safe, kids. You never know. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Some of your jokes are too funny. <laughs> well it is it okay on a serious note it is pretty spooky that a doll is carrying a real knife and not just a little toy one that aspect yes don't like that <laughs> okay okay i got some more i got some more for you let me just make sure i finished that one Okay, yes. Okay, so getting into this next one. This one's pretty freaky for all of us that wear headphones all the time because gamer heads is becoming a real thing. So a Twitch gamer who shaved his head for charity during a live stream was left in shock when he discovered an indent in his head where his headphones sit. So for any of you that are gamers that have headphones on for a multitude of hours, Check your head. Do you feel a little indent right there? I check mine from time to time to be absolutely honest with you. I'm being transparent here and you can bet your boots. As Bill Nelson once said, I check it. I do. And even though this looks kind of freaky, right? People might ask, will I look like this forever? No, you're fine. Take a hot shower. All right. Mold it back into place. Do some nice head massages, which are amazing, by the way. You're going to be fine. But this really, really caught traction in June of this year. And this is when other people started shaving off their heads and also finding these indents. And so I thought, this is pretty strange. Who would have thought 
20 years ago, now 30 years ago, we would have issues like this today. You wouldn't. It wouldn't even cross your mind. But here we are in 2023 and crazy nut job things like this are happening. Or you could possibly have a gamer head. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's funny. Okay. I think uh, I have one more for you because you were speeding through these, but I'm really glad that we were because there's just so much to cover. As I told you, it's 25 pages worth of notes. But this one, we're ending on a high note here. This one might have been one of my favorite articles of the year because it's something that is just so sweet, so cute, so adorable. And that's because a fifth grade class successfully lobbies for Sasquatch protection in Washington state. Can I just say this? Can I, may I please? Kids are so cute. Not only that, kids are our future. They are the future of humanity. We hear it generation after generation after generation. And it's true. If we are able to raise them right, we will hopefully have a brighter future. And for the for this fifth grade class to actually care about a cryptid, I love it. I love it so much. So for the second year in a row, a county in Washington state has declared itself a refuge for Sasquatch after being lobbied by a class of fifth graders. And the brainchild of teacher Andrea Andrews of the Lincoln Elementary School, the unique civics lesson saw her children research the famed cryptid, and then pen a letter to local government bodies in which they argue that the creature needs to be recognized and protected. In 2022, her class convinced the Gray Harbor County Board of Commissioners to pass a resolution wherein the county was decreed to be, to be just such a Sasquatch refuge area. And based off of that success, Andrews brought the lesson back this year in the hopes of extending those efforts. <sighs> this teacher needs a raise, okay? Number one. Number one and number a thousand. Because when you demonstrate, when you teach the, the effort of caring putting in the work and also the effort of just because you don't understand it now doesn't mean you shouldn't respect it. <gasps> These are skills we are not taught in school. You are taught a curriculum. You are taught not to ask questions and to just pass the class and then get out of the way, go through the door and have it be another person's problem. An SEP, as Sean Kirkpatrick said <laughs> during his arrow hearing earlier this year making it someone else's problem, an SEP. Teachers, and I've noticed this, is that their first two years, they are passionate. They are excited to teach kids. They just come out of college and they're ready. They're filled with inspiration. As the years progress, it gets a lot harder, not for all teachers, but for a lot of them. And why is that? Kids are not easy to teach. Kids are rebellious. They can be really mean. They can be bored out of their minds. And when they're not inspired, you're not inspired. You feed off of each other. And so then the teachers begin to lose that steam. They begin to lose that motivation that the ball isn't rolling as fast as it used to. And then in their mind, you just become an SEP and that's it. And then you're also taught to not ask questions. Remember, any time during your school life, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, whatever, you can imagine, you can just think of one teacher that you absolutely loved that maybe was classified as a wacky, like the crazy aunt kind of deal of the school. And you loved him or her to bits because they were just filled and oozing with passion, just like the magic school bus. Okay. And then you have those other teachers that always gave lectures in monotone that were so boring, that did not care about you, didn't even know your name, graded your paper, and that was it. You can probably think and put your teachers in those two categories. Easy for you. For this teacher, 
Mrs. Andrews to put in the work to have these kids be curious, she won my heart. She won my heart right then and there. Amazing. I, I love this story so much. But what about you? Out of the articles that we covered today, which one was your favorite? Or which one was your favorite that we've covered previously that I did not address today? Out of all of the strange news that you've ever seen on this channel, tell me your number one favorite article of the year. I want to know in the live chat. Please tell me in the comments as well. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the show. It lets me know that you're enjoying the show and it says, hey, YouTube, don't shadow ban this channel. We want more content like this. So please go ahead and do that right now. Also, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. We do three live shows right here on this channel. Paul says that his favorite article was the flaming toilet. Stargazer says, I like the rat wearing VR goggles. I almost put it in my list, but I didn't. I didn't because I was like, it was too recent. I covered it last week or two weeks ago. So, but I'm glad you liked it. That one was a really big one. No filter says Bigfoot. Ugh, bit bringing in, you know, the only answer that I like. Too many good ones. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I, I but give me your honesty on which one was your favorite. I don't write these, so <laughs> you can't hurt my feelings here. <laughs> Let's see. Bigfoot again. Jessica says, the mammoth meatball is calling out to me. That one's pretty crazy. It really is. <laughs> the 63-year-old dipping sauce. This one was almost also on my list. For those that don't know, this was a Japanese pot that hadn't been washed in about 60 plus years. And the gunk was about a foot thick from the original pot but it's believed to have created the best sauce for their pork skewers. And so they never cleaned it because they thought it created that amazing flavor. After the article went viral this year, a few months ago, actually, they think the general public thinks that they cleaned that pot after 60 years of leaving it untouched. Yeah. Pretty, pretty grody stuff. But at the same time, if someone were to tell me it's the best skewers you'll ever eat in your life, I would eat it because I would probably also need to take a bunch of medicine for my tummy just to be safe. Okay. But it's always those cracks in the wall restaurants, those restaurants that aren't usually that clean that will have the best food on the planet. Let me tell you a story. Okay. I went out to dinner with my dad. Oh my gosh. Like, five or six years ago, I was still in high school. And we went to this one restaurant that we both really enjoyed. It's a Vietnamese restaurant. And we always order tea and then our noodles, have it be pho or just have it be like your dried noodles. Um, bird's nest is my all time favorite. And so the lady passes us, the waitress passes us a cup facing down on the plate for our tea because we ordered green tea. I'm like, yeah, I'm so pumped. It's cold outside. I'm ready to be all heated up on the inside, right? I flip the cup. On that plate was a cockroach. If you've watched any of my shows, you know out of all the bugs on the planet, I have the biggest fear of cockroaches, okay? Number one, biggest fear. But I know how good their, their food is. So this is awful. I didn't say anything. I just pushed the cup to the side and I still ordered my food. I still, I still went ahead and I ordered whatever I wanted at the time. And, and I just put that plate somewhere very, very far away. And I did ask for another cup just to be safe. And I drank my tea and ate my noodles in peace. To be fair, I never returned to that restaurant. And that's my little story to you. Those cracks in the walls are amazing, but you got to take it with the good with the bad and, you know, weigh out, weigh out your pros and cons. I never returned to that restaurant, but I remember it. If, I, if I'm going to drive back on that road, I can point to you and say that was the restaurant, okay, where that cockroach was in my cup and their food is really bomb, but I don't know if I'm going to return to that place. To be fair, that was like six years ago or so. Maybe. They actually cleaned up. Maybe they 
they're reported by the hazard company, whatever those restaurant companies are, that food, food health, food health and services. Maybe that happened. Maybe they closed down. Maybe they're thriving. So many possibilities. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, that? The unprofessional says, did you ever leave a review or did you ever read reviews with the same experience? This was like six years ago. I never even understood the point of reviews. Now, oh, I do not enter a restaurant without reading reviews. I say, look, if it has lower than three stars, I'm not going. I'm not spending my money on food that doesn't taste good, especially with just the economy that we're in, the inflation, where every plate you buy is like easily $16, $17. Forget it. I'm reading those reviews. No question there. Now, if the food is really bomb, yeah, I'll pay it. No biggie. I'll pay 20 bucks for it. Awesome. But it better be good. It better be worth my time and my taste buds better be singing its praises. It should even make Jesus weep. Okay. If it doesn't do any of those things, I'm not going. <laughs> but that is it for today. Um, Follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news. And also on Instagram on at strange paradigms where I share pictures and short videos. If you want to continue the conversation, bring it over to the discord server with 2,900 other like-minded members. Let's get to 3k in the next three days. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it together. That group effort right there. 3,000 followers on discord. Let's do it. You and I. Okay, let's go right now. You can download it on your phone or you can have it on your laptop where you're able to share your insights, your thoughts, your experiences, and more. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this live, all the super chats, super, super chats, super stickers. That's what it is. YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and of course, all of my amazing moderators. You know I cannot do this show without you. That is it for today. I will see you next year. I will see you next year. Be safe. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.